Oh, okay. Good morning, beloveds. Had a bit of an interesting day yesterday. Um, I pulled into work, and we have a long parking lot because we're in a pretty long strip center. And I pull in the first one, and there's some dumpsters in the corner over there, and I noticed the dumpsters had been moved, and there were work trucks over there, and there's a big drill. I was like, that's interesting. Get in, get to work, get started, and I'll... And, like, I'm there for just a little bit, and all of a sudden I notice I'm really nauseated. Don't know why, and it's really quiet. And sometimes it can start that way on Mondays. The day, the day can start really quiet. And, um... My coworkers start to say, hey, you smell that? We were like, then we started seeing the emergency vehicles and we were like, what is going on? And it turns out that there was a um, <clears throat> natural gas leak. No, it wasn't a leak. It, they, somebody damaged a pipeline. And so it was leaking and it was really bad outside. And I, I didn't really smell it. Which is interesting because I'm like oversensitive to stuff like that. But I had a little bit of a headache and um, by the time we left, I had a raw throat. And so um, we were like, you know, the, building, the building services guy came in and we were like, you'll tell us if we need to evacuate. And then I thought, you know what, maybe I should call my owners and let my owners know what's going on. Uh, the owners of the store. And so I did. And, we, and they were like, maybe we should. Well... We'll let, we trust you to make the decision. And so I let one of the girls go because she just, she just couldn't hack it. And then we were there maybe another 20 minutes. And the other woman that was with me, she was really uncomfortable. And I was like, I have a little bit of a headache. And then the, the emergency services, emergency management services, the EMSs, they were coming to check on each of the stores. And I think he had a... I don't know with him. And he said, because we said, no, we're, we're, we're heading out. We had, we had already made the decision. We were going home. Because uh, they hadn't shut it off. They were waiting on somebody to come shut it off. And they didn't. And they said, it looks like it's going to be a while. And we were like, we're not doing this. We're done. Um, and so we called it and went home. And, uh, and my owners were, I, they're not happy about it. Because that's a day of sales that we're out. But they they were like, well, we need you to be able to come to work tomorrow. <laughs> so, okay. And it was just, you know. And so I came home and I stripped my clothes off and I took my clothes directly to the laundry and, or out into the garage. Uh, and then I jumped in the shower and scrubbed it all off. And then I rested and finished up stuff that I needed, you know, I spent some time in the chair working on the computer, um, on the two YouTube channels. And I was just like, I, and I, so I hope that they got it shut off and I hope that they got it fixed so that they can go to work today. Fortunately for me, I'm going to a different location today because I don't want to have to air that building out, but it was just odd. It was just odd. Um, but I did take the, the, the opportunity to rest. All right. Well, it's June 15th. We are halfway through June. We're almost halfway through the year. <laughs> All right. Um, but June 15th, our title is Divine Ideas Come to Me at Every Moment. And our Emerson quote is, The soul's communication of truth is the highest event in nature. Since it then does not give somewhat of itself, but it gives itself and becomes that man whom it enlightens. And let's see what Ernest and Raymond have to say. I accept the responsibility of being alive in God's great universe. Truth seeks to give itself to me and I open my mind to it. I let it I let down all the bars. I unlock all the gates of human wrong thinking. I expect to have my consciousness flooded with inspiration as the infinite mind uses me as its channel for expression. I allow the divine to enter and absorb me. I become the divine incarnate. This is what Jesus knew, and now I know it. He sensed his responsibility to so think and act. 
he sensed his responsibility to so think, act, and be that God would find no closed doors in his mind. I shall do likewise. I am the living expression of all that God is. I am not a body using a mind. I am spirit in complete authority over my world. I am a receiver of divine inspiration and a communicator of divine love. The potential of a perfect life is given to me to use. I develop it in fullness. I am not hindered by myself, for no longer do I claim material fallibil infallibility. I know that my senses may deceive me, my world may wrongly influence me, and only my thinking determines my experience. I give myself to the truth, and the truth sets me free from all previous wrong conclusions. One mind is the source of my life. Ideas are the beginnings and end of demonstration. I see myself as a mental being in a universe of mind action. I declare the truth, and the truth becomes my experience. I receive and affirm God's idea, and they bless and prosper me. My health is perfect because his mind is perfect. My affairs are in order because the order is the way because order is the way God works. Prosperity cannot pass me by, for his ideas in action through me guarantee my abundance. Every instant of this day is potent with God and his unfailing inspiration is mine and I accept it. All right. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some days I read them and I come out with a clear idea. And some days I read them and I'm going, I don't know what I just read. And today is one of those, I don't know what I just read. So we're going to work back through it. Um, I mean, starting with divine ideas come to me at every moment. I did a talk called Ideas Are Sleeting In At All Times. Are we open to them? Well, that's not exactly the title, but it was close. It's actually a Terry Pratchett quote from Leonard de Quirm, And Leonard de Quirm is based on Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and that's the truth. Ideas are always available. They are constantly bombarding us. The question becomes, are we open to them? And if we're not, how do we get open to them? Um, and the first step to being open to divine ideas is to be aware that there are divine ideas constantly bombarding us. Um, so as they are bombarding us, then how do we become more open to them? That goes back to spiritual practice. Do you hear the drum beat? <laughs> spiritual practice, spiritual practice, spiritual practice. And there are different kinds. Um, there is meditation, there is treatment, there is reading, um, there is listening to other people talk, listening to people talk about this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a wide variety of different kinds of spiritual practice. Uh, art can be a spiritual practice. And art, frankly, you know, uh, sitting down and drawing or writing or that, that's a good way to, to open yourself to the creative ideas. Um, especially if you sit down without a plan. <laughs> it's like sit down without a plan and just write or just draw or just paint or whatever it is that, you, you know, whatever medium you're using. And that's a way for the ideas to just to filter in. Um, and I, I mean, I understand the Emerson, but he just uses words. I'm developing an appreciation for Emerson, but I don't know that Emerson and I are ever going to be real good friends. We'll see. Okay, so the soul's communication of truth is the highest event in nature. I can't argue with that statement. Um, since it then does not give somewhat from itself, but gives itself. And I feel like there's a word where it said gives itself fully, like he just left a word off there. Gives itself fully and becomes that man whom it enlightens. So the soul isn't ours. The soul does not belong to us. The soul is what we are. <laughs> like we don't own it. 
it's that part of God that becomes us. There's an old joke about selling your soul to the devil. You can't sell what you don't own. And you don't own the soul. Because the soul is God as you. <laughs> and it doesn't do anything halfway. It fully commits to being you. So, yeah. All right. And I like the first thing that he says is I accept the responsibility of being alive in God's great universe. We have rights and we have responsibilities. And we can't have rights without having responsibilities. And God's universe is all around us and we have a responsibility to act like it belongs to God. Because God created it. It's made by God, of God, from God, you know. Uh, truth seeks to give itself to me and I open my mind to it. So I am aware of it and I seek to open my mind. I let down all of the bars. I unlock all of the gates of human wrong thinking. I acknowledge that I have made mistakes and... Now I am going to look for the truth. Where am I going to look? Within the sacred. Where do I find the sacred? Well, one place to start is right here. Neither here nor there, both in combination. Um, and then sacred literature and that kind of stuff. Uh, I expect to have my consciousness flooded with inspiration as the infinite mind uses me as its channel for expression. I am acknowledging that I am a channel for the infinite and I expect to be flooded with it, with those ideas. Expect it and it will happen. Uh, I allow the divine to enter and absorb me. I mean, the truth is, I am made from, you are made from the divine. But it's about getting out of our own way and allowing the divine to be what it is without us trying to filter it. I become the divine incarnate. How does that make you feel when you say that? This is what Jesus knew and now I know it. He, Jesus, sensed his responsibility to so think, act, and be that God would find no closed doors in his mind. I shall do likewise. Act like Jesus. Act like Jesus. That's one of the things that Ernest was a big believer in. He, Ernest was like, you know what? Jesus is the great example. He set up his treatment the way Jesus prayed. He said, all right. Do you see what this man did in the brief time that he was on this planet and how he is still echoing 2,000, more than 2,000 years later? Um, he's still echoing through our consciousness. We need to do that. We need to do more of that. Um, I am the living expression of all that God is. All at once, no, but... I'm a tiny splinter of what God is, but everything that God is, I can be if I am willing. Everything that spirit that God is, you can be if you are willing. I am not a body using a mind. So you are not a body using a mind. You, I am spirit in complete authority over my world. You are spirit in complete authority over your world. All right. I am the receiver of divine inspiration and the communicator of divine love. Right. We are the receiver of divine inspiration and the communicator of divine love. We have a responsibility to be that. We receive that love and then we communicate that love. We receive that love and then we pass it on. Because the more we pass on, the more flows through us. That's the amazing thing about love. It's like you can't hold on to it. You let it flow through. And it does all these amazing things as it's, as it's passing through. And it never runs out. It is coming from an inexhaustible source. I, okay, wait. No, the potential of 
a perfect life is given to me to use and I develop it in fullness. Now remember, the potential of a perfect life is not flawless, it is whole. So it includes the messy stuff too. It includes the messy, it includes the juicy, it includes the amazing, and it includes the oh my god. And it includes the oh my god. So, you know, perfect life means whole. That means that all of the things are included. The messy, the juicy, the are you kidding me? It's all included. And it's for us to make of what we will. Uh, I develop it in fullness. Fullness. I am not hindered by myself, for no longer do I claim material infallibility. I'm going to have to think about that. <laughs> I, um, but basically, get a, I, he is suggesting that we can, we can and should get out of our own way. Uh, I know that my senses may deceive me, my world may wrongly influence me, and only my thinking determines my experience. And I think it was Shakespeare that said, nothing is good or bad, it's thinking that makes it so. There are things that are wrong, but... You know what I mean. I give myself to the truth, and the truth sets me free from all previous wrong conclusions. I've made mistakes. I've acknowledged them and moved on. I have learned from them and moved on. Give yourself that freedom. If you've made mistakes, take the information and let them go. Forgive yourself. The one mind is the source of my life. Statement of fact. Ideas are the beginning and end of demonstration. It starts in an idea and ends in an idea. I see myself as a mental being in a universe of mind action. I declare the truth and the truth becomes my experience. I receive and affirm God's ideas and they bless and prosper me. He is using power statements here. My health is perfect because God's mind is perfect. My affairs are in order because order is the way God works. Prosperity cannot pass me by, for God's ideas in action through me guarantee my abund abundance. Every instant of this day is potent with God, and God's unfailing inspiration is mine, and I accept it. And that last little three sentences, I accept it. God can throw all of the divine ideas at us. But unless we are willing to accept them, they're just going to bounce. They're just going to bounce. So that's why we want to be open. That's why we want to do our spiritual practice. That's why we, we want to read and we want to make art. and We want to go and do and... We want to interact with the divine in ways that are meaningful to us. Uh, if reading sacred text does not do it for you, but going for a walk in nature does, then do that. And then you will find those divine ideas just flooding in. All right. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little stymied on the mission today. Wait, wait, no, I do. There is, where was it? Our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to be a receiver of divine inspiration and a communicator of divine love. That's our mission. A receiver of divine inspiration. And every time I think about that, I think radio towers. <laughs> All right, I know, I have a wicked sense of humor. 
So that's the mission today. And what I would encourage you to do also, as I always do, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, it can be big, it can be small, it can be, you know, all day. It can be uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I hope it's more than five. You deserve more than five minutes of love, kind and compassion. Um, but I encourage you to practice it on yourself because nobody deserves it more than you. You deserve your own love, your own kindness, and your own compassion. And the more you practice on yourself, the more you will have to share. Please remember, you are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased, always and forever. That is the state of grace that we live in. We are mind in action. We are God in action. Um, and there are so many things that couldn't happen here without us. So, big and small. So, you are needed and you are necessary and you are loved. And... It is hot, so I will encourage you, while I do encourage you to do something to engage your mind and your body, you may want to do it early if you're going to do it outside, uh, whatever that looks like to you, please drink plenty of water. Uh, I am not going to advocate you opening your windows because it's hot out there. I do advocate the fresh air, but not necessarily open your windows. Um, I am going to uh, encourage you to open the windows of your soul. Allow that breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven now. It's all around you. You look for the good, you praise it, and you'll see more of it. That's the way it works. All right, beloveds. Um, it's Tuesday. So, um, I don't think there's anything in particular going on. Usually Tuesdays are class days, like Tuesdays and Thursdays are class days. So, uh, and there are, you can only join after the first two. But that being said, there will be stuff tomorrow. There will be stuff Thursday. So email info at creativelife.org if you want to find out what we're doing any day of the week. Uh, you can also check our website, creativelife.org. Uh, have a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful day. Do what you need to do to make it a good day. And know that Reverend David will be on Facebook Live around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. tomorrow on Facebook Live. And you could always catch any of these on the Running Rev Ryan YouTube channel. So feel free to check that out too. All right, beloveds, have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.